Apple finally announced the new Mac Pro that we've been waiting for for years and with it a surprise Mac Studio. So in this video I will tell you guys every single difference along with my thoughts on the Mac Pro and why I think Apple is kind of giving up and why I wish that I kept my 2019 Mac Pro that I recently finally just sold. Now I ordered two Mac Studios and the Mac Pro which will be here early next Next week so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see our hands-on comparisons and where they differ along with the performance of the new M2 Ultra chip and if it's worth it over the M2 Max. Now the biggest difference between these two is the price tag. I mean the difference is insane. Four grand compared to seven as a base starting price. But what comes with that? Well, we have the same form factor as the 2019 Mac Pro, which makes sense because there's a lot of room for PCI cards and Apple spent a bunch of money developing this beautiful design. But the Mac Studio is so much smaller and it packs nearly the same punch because if both of them have the same exact chip and for seven grand, you still get the bend version as you do for four and that is terrible. Gone are the 12 RAM slots on the Mac Pro. So now it is built in, meaning you still have a maximum of 192 gigs, just like on the Mac Studio. And as far as your SSDs, well, that also goes up to eight terabytes, which is a lot. But the Mac Studio can also upgrade to that at that crazy high price. Now, there is one difference. We tore apart the Mac Studio and showed you guys that you could easily unscrew and replace the SSD but Apple never sold those kits. Whereas with the new Mac Pro, they are selling the upgrade kits for that. And it's pretty easy to do as we showed you in our Mac Pro teardown. Now the price tag is ridiculous, $2,800. Um, so they are destroying you with that. But on the flip side, because of the PCI slots, you can actually add in the 16 terabyte card for less money and it actually will go beyond 26,000 megabytes per second whereas the Mac Pros is going to get around 7,000 so it makes no sense anyways. Now internally the new Mac Pro can still connect regular hard drives because it does have a few SATA ports so you can buy this caddy from Pegasus and yes it is compatible with the 2023 model but it is 400 bucks. So you can easily get an external unit for your Mac Studio. And I love that the Mac Studio has that super fast SD card slot on the front. We use it all the time. And as far as connectivity, the Mac Pro has eight Thunderbolt ports compared to six on the Mac Studio. So you get two more but I think for most people that won't really matter. So the biggest difference is mainly those extra PCI slots. And the good thing is that they are PCI Express 4. The Mac Studio can connect to external PCI units over Thunderbolt, but because of the bandwidth limitations, you'll only get about 2,800 megabytes per second at the peak for data transfers uh, compared to over 26,000 internally. Now, that's not a big deal for a lot of people, uh, but if you do need things that need a lot of bandwidth, for example, this card right here will go over 26,000, go up to 64 terabytes in one card. It's very expensive. That's just something that you cannot do. Or for another example, if you need networking cards that are very fast, for example, 100 gigabit per second, that will work in the Mac Pro. And I think this is gonna be just for crazy companies that get the server version of the Mac Pro. This could be something that they might need. Now, for people with a Mac Studio, you could still get external uh, 10 gigabit ethernet or even 25 gigabit ethernet, but the 25 will still be throttled in maximum performance because of Thunderbolt. And there are no Thunderbolt 4 external PCI card units that I have found yet. Apple also mentioned that the Mac Pro can ingest 24 streams of video at one time with those PCI slots. Of course, that's something you can't do with the Mac Studio, but who needs to do that? Almost nobody. And personally, I think that this Mac Pro 
just will not sell well at all, maybe even worse than before. If Apple didn't launch the Mac Studio, which is actually quite a good upgrade, especially if you need raw GPU performance, then the Mac Pro might have made a little bit more sense, or if they priced this lower, just a little bit more expensive, not a $3,000 difference, maybe if they kept it un unbinned for that base model and maybe gave you a little bit more SSD in the base, that wouldn't cost them that much and it'd make a much better value. But at $3,000 of a difference, I think that people that buy this thing, say a year and a half, two years from now, when we get new chips and they finally release something that is more powerful as than the Mac Studio, for example, we had many leaks of the Extreme chip, which would be four um, M1 or M2 Max style chips that are put together, giving you double the graphics performance in CPU. Well, when that comes out, whoever buys the Mac Pro now will be very disappointed. And I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I'm kind of disappointed that I sold my Mac Pro. It took me a year, year and a half to sell that thing and I had to drop the price down to a very low price. But personally, I think that this Mac Pro is a disappointment and some people might still want to go and buy the Intel version. The CPU performance isn't great, but you can put in four graphics cards in there uh, from AMD and get killer graphics performance if you're doing a ton of graphics rendering and the ability to have up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM, which some people do need for crazy um, kind of work. Well, that might actually raise up the price of the Intel Mac Pros because Apple is no longer selling them. Uh, but because the chips are the same and these Mac, the Mac Pro and Mac Studio launched at the same time, um, I think that's really gonna hurt the Mac Pro. And I think a lot of people are gonna upgrade to the Mac Studio if they needed to, or if they need a little bit more performance, because in some things like 3D rendering, the new M2 Ultra chip, which is available in the Mac Studio, is way more powerful than the M1 Ultra. But we showed off the bottlenecks with graphic scaling with the M1 Ultra. It looks like Apple has fixed that. And now even the M2 Max for 3D rendering beats out the M1 Ultra. I mean, that difference is massive and you can get that in the Mac Studio. Now the Mac Pro does come with this $200 keyboard with that Apple charges for it and that $100 mouse. The Mac Studio does not come with that, but a lot of people would rather use their own that are more ergonomic. Um, so I don't think that's a very big value point. And I think overall, this is the worst way they could have launched the Mac Pro. Um, if they're not giving any exclusive performance at all and they're charging a $3,000 price gap and they're launching both of them at the same time, it just sucks. They would have been better off not upgrading the Mac Studio and getting people to upgrade their Mac Pros. But at this point, I just wanna hear your guys' opinion. What do you think about this? I think it's one of the worst ways to launch a product that they could have done. And I honestly think that they're kind of giving up on it. Um, they could have done so much better. Even the, the power supply is still 1,280 watts. They haven't even touched it. They don't need that performance, but they're just putting it in. So it's a very expensive component. Um, so you guys let me know your thoughts. Would you rather have a smaller enclosure with less slots maybe that's custom designed for a lower price so it wouldn't cost so much? I wanna hear your guys' opinions. Of course, click that circle above if you guys want to see our hands-on comparisons, maybe the thermal performance between the two machines and anything else and M2 Max versus M2 Ultra. Click that uh, video there if you wanna check out something else and I'll see you in the next one.